true that you talk about God being out there, but isn't it also true that actually God is inside us and that, that what we see as the universe out there is actually a projection of everything that's actually, like the whole universe is within us when we go into darkness or no, the nothing, that that's where the universe actually is and this is just a yeah. physical manifestation of what's actually within our own. The belief you're stating is actually yeah. a sixth year spirit belief. It's a spirit, it's a belief that all spirit, many spirits on the natural love path finish up believing. The truth is actually that God is not inside of you. God is actually an entity that exists and existed before you even existed. And God also has the ability to be inside, or part of God has the ability to be inside of you, but only when you ask for it. So many people feel that we were all born with God inside of us. The truth is actually quite different to that. If we were born with God inside of us, God would have already broken one of their own laws, and that is the law of free will. But is that what people talk about when they talk about realising God? You know, that people have a point in their lives when they they realise they don't know God, but then they suddenly realise God. Um, All realisation of God is, is due to them beginning to receive divine love. In other words, there's a feeling in their soul where they begin longing for God, and all of a sudden at that moment, the communication, you could say, begins between God and themselves. And as God's love starts entering them, they actually realise that there is this entity outside of themselves that existed that they weren't experiencing before but they are now experiencing. So the, the, a lot of the new age beliefs nowadays actually prevent you from having divine love enter your soul. And the way they prevent it is by causing you to believe that you already have it. And if you think you already have it, you're not going to ask for it or you're not going to ask for more of it. And so my, my suggestion is view God differently. View God as an entity outside of yourself with whom you can have a relationship. In other words, view God and yourself as in a parent-child relationship. God's your creator, God's your father and your mother. View God that way in this personal way and then realise that you can personally connect to this God through the longings that you have developed within your own soul, within your own emotions. And if you view it that way, you will have completely different experiences with God than you will have if you already view God to be inside of yourself and going into nothingness. Do you, do you understand the difference between what I'm trying to present? See, most six fear spirits believe exactly what you presented and that's why they never ever get to the stage of one with God. They believe themselves to be at one with God. They call themselves Christ conscious but in reality they are not experiencing because of the emotional connection that, that, that you know, they are intellectualizing what is an emotional connection and they have some false beliefs about God. You can't be at one with God without having the same beliefs God has about herself in you. Does that make sense? So what I'm suggesting is give away all of your current concepts about what you believe God to be, right? And ask God to tell you what she is. And be open to that emotionally. Right? So give away all of these concepts. Is you know most of us have lots of religious concepts that we've been presented. Um, most of us have lots of reading that we've done about all these different concepts of God. I'm suggesting give all of those away, and instead now just emotionally connect with God, and allow God to tell you who and what she is. And you'll find you'll have some very, very different concepts about God very rapidly appear to you if you do that. And this is what part of humility is, being willing to actually give away my own definitions even of God. If I'm willing to do that, I'm willing then to accept God's truth. See, the problem is for most of us is that we are so connected to our own truth. Many of us have spent tens of years trying to discover this truth that we now have, that we feel we now have within us, right? And so what we have a tendency to do then is hold on to this truth and grip it tightly and we find it very, very difficult to attempt to even give it up. 
My suggestion is you are going to have to give up all of your own concepts of truth and allow God, through this emotional connection <coughs> between yourself and God, allow God to define her truth to you. And if you completely allow that experience, you will find some really strong definitions of truth come to you about God and about who she is and what she is and all those things. If you allow that experience emotionally. If you don't allow that experience emotionally, you will hold on to your own concepts of truth and your own concepts of God. And if you do that, what will happen is you're now, and when you think about it, it's quite a proud thing or an arrogant thing for us to attempt. If it's very arrogant for us to attempt to define God to ourselves. We're actually wanting God to conform to my own concept of God. My suggestion is the opposite of that. Allow God to, to tell you who she is by this feeling connection that goes on. This feeling connection is the way that God will do it with you. And you won't need anyone else in that process. It's all just between you and God. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? So, this part, the divine truth, that's why I said, seek first, like, the truth will set you free. Right? The truth, the truth, I'm not talking about your truth sets you free, that doesn't set you free. Many times you hold on to your truth and you'll be stagnant for a long time, right? It's when you release your own concepts of truth and you accept the divine truth, God's truth, by this emotional transaction, that the truth will set you free.